Well guys, it has finally happened. I am seeing a system requirements chart that says for the absolute minimum spec, GPU hardware ray tracing required. Now, that's pretty new. We've seen some games that pretty much force ray tracing all the time, but there's always been a software fallback. We've seen this in like Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, Star Wars Outlaws, uh, but uh, and even on some Unreal Engine 5 games, have Lumen on at all times, which is a type of ray tracing, but it has a software mode so it can run on graphics cards that don't have hardware ray tracing. I think the only other game I can think of off the top of my head that was hardware ray tracing mandatory was Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, but there was a non-enhanced edition version of the game that didn't have required hardware ray tracing. So maybe I'm forgetting or missing something, but as far as I can tell, this is the first time I have seen a system requirements chart for a game list GPU hardware ray tracing required. There does not appear to be any way to get out of it. The game is designed with hardware ray tracing in mind. Um, consoles are capable of that, so if they're designing at that you know level of performance at a minimum, then they can do their lighting system based on that. A lot of game developers have talked about how uh, you know developing a game where all you have to worry about is ray tracing uh, to handle lighting and 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 whatnot um, being easier for them. Um, well, here we are. That, that, that's where we're at. Now, this is for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. We did also just get a launch trailer for this, and the game's release date is uh, December 9th. So this is coming out pretty soon. Now, when I look at this, I mean, it certainly does look good. Um, the engine seems to be an id tech engine, so we're going to have to kind of... Uh, usually those are known for being pretty performant, but that's generally in the context of, you know, the Doom games, Doom Eternal... Uh, uh, you know, r running super well on a lot of hardware and honestly running pretty performant even with some ray tracing enabled. So uh, really interesting uh, to kind of see where we're uh, going to end up with this. Now, d despite there being hardware ray tracing required, the overall minimum spec for the game isn't too crazy. Um, although the uh, path, full path tracing modes that they have on offer. That's similar to, you know, how Cyberpunk has like an RT Overdrive mode and uh, a, a few other games like Alan Wake 2, Black Myth Wukong have those like super advanced ray tracing modes. This game has that too, and it looks like it's absolutely going to be challenging in RTX 4090, uh, including using uh, frame generation and uh, performance mode upscaling. So, that's quite a bit right there. But again, if you just want to get into the door, even though you do need hardware ray tracing, uh, you know, hardware, uh, what hardware do you need? It's looking like the GPU here is actually not too crazy. An RTX 2060 Super or Radeon RX 6600. Now, that's not too crazy. And again, notice it says RTX 2060 Super, not 2060. The Super version has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, and given that... Um, ray tracing generally requires more VRAM than not ray tracing. I'm guessing that's going to be a bit of a sticking point for some people. Now, I was curious what it would take to get a, a PC that would live up to at least this minimum spec, uh, which includes the CPU as a Ryzen 5 3600 and 16 gigabytes of RAM, 120 gigabyte SSD. Uh, and I popped over to Jawa, which is having some amazing holiday sales right now. And I found a uh, 5600G RTX 2060 super based uh, gaming PC all put together, ready, ready to go with the 16 gigabytes of RAM and all that uh, for as low as $650. Or if you don't need to upgrade the full system, uh, I could find an RTX 2070, which is slightly better, very similar to the 2060 Super, uh, as low as $200. Now, this is a great way to go uh, because, uh, for example, if I tried to buy a new NVIDIA GPU right now around the $200 mark, uh, the lowest price I can find new is an RTX 3050 8 gigabyte at around $220. Uh, but over here on Jawa's used market, I can get a 2070 for around $200. I mean, that's a massively better... Uh, a better performance. Like if we look at the relative performance chart at Tech Power up to 3058 gigabyte set as the baseline, 
uh, the RTX 2070, and again, that's very similar in performance to the 2060 Super minimum requirement, uh, being 32% faster for less money. So uh, really, uh, shopping on a, a market like buy gamers for gamers like jamo.gg can absolutely save you money. I can save you some extra money uh, using code OWEN10 for $10 off your first purchase, and a huge thank you to Jamo for sponsoring this part of today's video. Uh, don't forget to check out their Cyber Week deals uh, that are still up, um, gift ideas at, at all variety of price range, um, a whole bunch of um, uh, fully built PCs, and you can also trade in your old hardware, CPUs and GPUs, uh, to get instant offers from Jawa to get some quick holiday cash, or you can list it yourself, set, it, set your own price. Uh, Jawa is a really great place. You can take a look at all of these uh, uh, you know, you know, reviews, everything. They have a, a valuable Discord community. You get a lot of feedback on your build. Uh, and again, check out the link in the video description and or pinned comment. Now, let's go ahead and check out some of the stuff, you know, going a little bit beyond this minimum spec, or maybe look at the minimum spec a bit longer, because we also have an AMD GPU listed here as the RX 6600 8GB, and what kind of performance are we getting here? One nice thing to see here is that the minimum spec isn't targeting 30 FPS, it says 60 FPS, and I was worried that it would be absolutely butchering upscaling, but it's not. It's saying 1080p native. They are specifying native. And can I just say thank you to whoever put together the system requirement chart because they're making it clear not only whether or not upscaling is being used, uh, but at what level it is being used at if it is being used um, and the frame rate targets, the resolution targets. This is the right way to do a PC system requirements chart. It has um, all the information I wanna know right here. So to be clear, the minimum specs uh, are a, um, are targeting 60 FPS at 1080p, native resolution, no upscaling. That's great to see, it does require an SSD. Um, and here, uh, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so the RX 6600 is a bit interesting here because if, for example, we set that as the baseline and then compare it to the NVIDIA requirement with this, the 27, uh, sorry, 2060 Super, they're within about 3% of each other in what's generally considered not ray tracing performance here, which means that even though it's saying that, that hardware ray tracing is required, it seems like at the minimum spec level, it's not asking a lot because in heavier ray tracing titles, usually the NVIDIA GPU will be pulling further ahead and yet it is still listing these uh, as within that same tier for 1080p 60fps medium. And RX 6600 is not a lot of hardware ray tracing power. So that's an interesting note um, uh, going along with that. Now do note that if you wanna go up to the recommended build, uh, we'd be jumping to 32 gigabytes of RAM and a much more powerful GPU, a 3080 Ti or an RX 7700 XT. Notice that both of those are 12 gigabyte cards. A 3080 non-Ti would only be 10 gigabyte. Uh, so again, I'd, I'd keep an eye on the VRAM requirements here. That's potentially something they're trying to hint at with this. Uh, and the CPU requirements jumping up quite a bit here to a 12700K or 70, uh, uh, Ryzen 7 7700. Uh, jumping all the way up from like a Ryzen 5 3600 and 10700K, that is a big jump. Now, I'm also curious if that's actually required uh, because if you could hit 60 FPS with the Ryzen 5 3600, and this is still targeting 60 FPS just with higher graphics settings, I'd be surprised if you needed that much more powerful of a CPU. So either that's overkill, or maybe this one, the 3600 wasn't really hitting 60 FPS. We'll have to see, something seems a bit fishy there because usually turning up resolution and graphic settings doesn't make that big of a difference on the CPU, although certain settings can, I don't know, we'll have to see. Uh, anyway, here we're getting that this would again be um, rendering at native resolution and at 1440p and targeting 60 frames per second. So if you had a less powerful GPU but used upscaling, maybe that could save the day if you're on a 1440p screen and don't have GPUs of quite this caliber. Uh, here we're looking at, compared to the minimum spec, a pretty big jump. So if we're going from a, uh, a you know, I'll set the 2060 Super as the baseline. If we're setting, setting that as the baseline and we want to scroll up through some GPUs here, uh, you may be able to spot yours. I'll link this uh, relative performance chart in the video description if you want to kind of figure out where you fall in. Uh, but going up to the 3080 Ti is going quite a ways up here. Uh, looking like a 2.25 times the performance roughly here. Uh, so not, but you know we're going from 1080p60 to 1440p60. That's a lot more resolution, and we're increasing graphics settings. 
uh, notice that, that we're going from the low preset uh, all the way up to the high preset. So there is some wiggle room of probably, you know, a medium preset using DLSS quality um, or, or other resolution scaling techniques. Um, so, uh, you know, th there's some wiggle room there, but that is pretty beefy if you want to be playing at native high settings, uh, 60 FPS at 1440p. Now, uh, the ultra settings they're saying are targeting 4K60 at a native rendering resolution, which is quite brutal. I think a lot of people at 4K would be at least using quality level upscaling. Uh, and here they're saying ultra settings, but again, that's not the fully ray tracing mode. Uh, here they're asking for a 4080 or 7900 XT. Now again, the AMD requirement not seem too crazy out of step from the NVIDIA requirement for a game that's apparently requiring ray tracing. So again, it seems like in the not fully ray trace mode, but just the, ray, the normal mode, which requires uh, ray tracing, it seems like it's not too crazy of a ray tracing level because generally we would see um, AMD GPUs uh, take a further step back. Uh, so, so again, to kind of uh, talk about that, so if we set that 3080 Ti as our baseline, um, uh, again, they said that a 7700 XT could have kind of kept up with that, which again felt like uh, asking for less from the AMD hardware than might be expected compared to that 3080 Ti. So again, kind of hinting that, that maybe it was a VRAM thing or maybe the 10 gigabyte uh, just wasn't enough on the normal 3080 or something like that. But anyway, stepping up to the uh, 4080 and the 7900 XT, once again, the interesting thing being uh, that generally the, the uh, 7900 XT is uh, a less close match to the 4080 than the 7900 XTX. Uh, generally, the XTX is within about 2%, a little bit faster than a 4080, uh, but the 7900 XT uh, reaching 88% of the performance of the 4080. So they're both like in the same ballpark, uh, but generally the closer match would have been the XTX. So again, it seems odd that the AMD GPU requirements seem a bit lower than the NVIDIA GPU requirements, despite the, the uh, stuff stating that, that hardware ray tracing is required. Now, if the hardware ray tracing is designed around console level specs, which are AMD hardware and are not super powerful at ray tracing, it's possible that's just what it's kind of optimized around. I'm just really interested to see what happens when we can actually get our hands and t uh, on this game and test it on December 9th. Uh, but now we've got the full ray tracing mode, which again uh, has its own minimum recommended and ultra spec. These are all targeting 60 FPS, although now there's another big caveat here. Uh, let's zoom in so we uh, don't miss this. Uh, scroll on over with frame generation, with frame generation and super resolution. Now, uh, depending on the resolution target here, they are using reasonable super resolution targets. I wouldn't love uh, upscaling at 1080p, but using quality upscaling is a lot better than if they were trying to go to performance mode. Uh, when they're doing their 1440p recommendation, they are using balanced mode upscaling. Again, I'd probably prefer quality, but if we're going for a full-on path tracing mode, we generally need more aggressive upscaling. And again, they're going with performance mode upscaling at the 4K resolution, which I actually really don't mind in a lot of games uh, with DLSS performance mode. But again, this is all with frame generation and that's to hit 60 FPS. That's the problem. Using frame generation uh, for a 60 FPS target is generally terrible. So I'm hoping that it's actually uh, hitting a lot higher than 60 FPS, uh, and maybe this is somehow just like system requirements charts for some reason don't ever talk about going above 60 FPS. <laughs> I don't know, because that's a little, bit, uh, a little bit scary there. Now, what kind of GPUs are we needing to hit that? Uh, so it's looking like if you just want to play at 1080p upscaling quality with frame generation to hit 60 FPS, you need an RTX 4070, and that's quite a bit. Uh, the CPUs are back down to uh, a Ryzen 5 3600 again, so again, seeing the CPU scale like this, uh, I, I have my doubts on whether that's actually necessary because the, the frame rate target doesn't go up as, as we do this. Uh, so again, that seems a bit odd. Maybe it's just what's in their test systems. Um, again, to hit 1440p uh, 60 FPS with the full ray tracing mode. Um, uh, by the way, the, the low one, uh, this was with graphics preset low. This is now moving up to high. It's from the 4070 to here. So we're also increasing the graphics preset and then also kicking on the full ray tracing mode. Anyway, this looks incredibly demanding. The, the 4080 uh, is going for 1440p 60 FPS with balanced upscaling and frame generation. Um, with, with uh, 
uh, to hit the high settings plus the uh, the full RT mode. And then uh, if you want to be playing at 4K with the full RT mode, you're going to be DLSS performance with frame generation um, on an RTX 4090. So I'm hoping that those full RT requirements are a bit overstated, especially in regards to DLSS 3 frame generation. I'm hoping maybe they're just emphasizing that frame generations available. If you're really needing it just to hit 60 FPS on that hardware, this is going to be an unusable mode until we maybe get the 5090 or something like that. Um, but if you're actually getting more like 50 FPS without frame generation and then like the, the frame gen kind of pushes you past that, that's a little more reasonable. So this game I think is definitely going to need some benchmarking when it comes out. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested in that. And again, don't forget to fund your holiday shopping, uh, you know, by selling your old GPU at, at Jawa or get that extra holiday cash, checking out their builds. Uh, check out all the holiday sales throughout December, and don't forget I can get you $10 off your first purchase using code ON10. I hope all of you have an excellent day.